So you are now in the season four recruiting special. What's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And our recruiting board, well, a lot of top prospects aren't as interested after last season as they were after season two. Because remember, we did win the Fiesta Bowl. But just looking at the top 100 recruits, at least we had two that had us in the top three. We have none here. And as we keep going down the list, there's a guy out of Matt, Matt London out of Maryland. We're third on his list, but besides that, not a lot of top guys this year are interested. And I guess getting that major bowl victory in season two definitely boosted us there. And last year we had a good season. I mean, it was a really good season, but I guess we didn't get that national attention like the year before. So before hopping into the recruiting special and doing a deep dive here and getting to these high school highlights, it's a lot of fun to do. Let's look at the holes on our team. And look at this, Matt McDonald's actually rated eight, five overall higher than Drayvon Jennings. That's pretty big, to be honest. He's got 90 awareness. I mean, he's pretty good. 94 acceleration, 79 speed, meaning he can take off. And that's why I like to run kind of like an option when he's in the game, more of a spread look, doing a lot of, you know, quarterback design runs, things like that. We're definitely going to have to get a backup here because let's look at Drayvon Jennings. And this is what I've been bringing up uh, in the comments section. If you've been following along a little bit, Drayvon Jennings gets hurt a lot and he's got a 91 injury rating. I don't know how that happens, but he gets injured quite a bit. So we're gonna definitely going to need to re uh, recruit quarterback in this next class because Ray Reed's a sophomore. He's a capable backup, but he's not as good as Drayvon Jennings. And if you look at his ratings here, he has decent uh, throw accuracy, but his throw power is definitely a lot lower. So quarterback is definitely a position we want to look at. You know, we're pretty much set at running back. I got to say, Denzel Knox and Jay Taylor, that one-two punch, they're really good, and they're just getting better. Uh, fullback, we don't. We might need to recruit fullback now that we're in the pro-style system, so that's definitely a position to look at. Receiver is definitely a position we're going to have to get here because we have two big seniors here, Carl Wolf and Matt Pollard, our two best receivers, are going to be graduating in two years. And also Jamal Taylor, he's a junior. So we're definitely going to be looking at a new receiving core in the future. I'm not sold on these bottom guys here, George Dean and Scott Hollins. I'm just not sure they were walk-ons, and I just don't see them being a part of the future. Mark Harrell might, but he's not getting in much so far in these first two games. Looking at tight end, this is definitely a position I keep talking about. We definitely need to recruit there. Our offensive line, you know, it's always good to recruit offensive line. We have some seniors, actually. You know, see Dante Bull. He's a senior. And then uh, Joe Johnson's a, a sophomore. But then we have a junior at left tackle here with Max Barth. So we do have to recruit there. On our defensive line, we definitely need to recruit here as well. I mean, we have a lot of holes because we're going to have to redshirt the next class and get them prepared to start as redshirt freshmen maybe if that's a possibility jamar hardy at right end so we have a lot of like graduating guys or guys that are getting close to graduating that we're gonna have to start thinking about replacing looking at andre armstead he's a junior i did to is a senior but i'm pretty sure that Ioli managa is going to be starting at my middle linebacker in the future i definitely am looking forward to him and then cornerback we don't really need anybody here because we have a lot of young guys but looking at safety, you know, it's interesting. Marcus Daniels has showed up. I really like his game. But James Will Smith is actually kind of the guy that I've been looking for him to step up. He's got eight tackles through two games, but he's just not showing up, you know, with the tackles for losses that Trey Webb had. He doesn't really have any big interceptions or big pass deflections. He has won so far this year. But, you know, I haven't really seen too many flashes of him and I kind of want him to step up a little bit and be more of a playmaker for the defense. So we got a good look at Jax King. He is the number one free safety in California, number 15 overall, and you can see he's pretty good. I mean, he could be a better tackler, but I think he has the savvy on the field to cover a lot of guys, tight ends, running backs, everybody. He's got 81 man and 81 zone. That's really good as a safety. And I'm looking forward to maybe getting him, but we are fourth on his list. And look, he's looking to go to Army, Missouri, and Minnesota. I'm not really sure if we have a chance at him. He does need to add to his frame. He is 6'1", 165. So we'll see with him. 
So let's talk about a guy that I really, really like because of his strength, Igor Vishikov. So he's from Russia originally, moved to Alaska. He's played high school football for about two years, so he's pretty inexperienced, but he pretty much demands a double team. He is a beast, and I'm really looking forward to possibly having him on the squad because he is very athletic for his size. But, you know, he's got to develop his pass rushing moves. He uses his strength a lot for pass rushing, do doing a lot of bull rushes, things like that. He's really good in the run. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do at defensive tackle. We don't really have a force there, so we'll see. Cam Merriman, he's a really good safety. He's the number one free safety in the nation. He's a four-star prospect out of L.A. And I really like this guy. He can tackle with the best of them rarely do you see him miss tackles and I really like that I can use a guy that can play up in the box and pretty much be that guy like Trey Webb that we had I mean Trey Webb was really good in coverage and Cameron Merriman doesn't really have that but he can develop that I mean honestly he can develop that and you never know he might be good enough to even convert to linebacker if we really need him to so a lot of packages where we have a lot of linebackers on on the field and we need kind of a guy who's kind of a hybrid safety linebacker he can play in those packages. I'm really excited to see what we can do with him. We are second on his list, so we'll have to see how the recruiting shakes out for him. So let's quickly jump to offense. Tyree Jordan out of Phoenix, Arizona, a tight end. And this is one of the positions that I want to recruit. This guy played a receiver in high school. Just take a look at this guy. He can block. He pancakes the first guy on that play, pancakes the second. He's a converted receiver, but he's big and he can block. And that's something I'm going to need in this pro style system. So it's going to be pretty cool seeing him kind of evolve in our offense. He's very under recruited. So I'm pretty sure we have a really good shot at getting him. He's pretty close to, I'd say, committing. And I think that he's going to be an excellent addition to the offense. So I mentioned before that we do need to start thinking about quarterback because Drayvon Jennings, he's injury prone and you never know what can happen. Thomas Rodriguez is the number five quarterback in the nation and he can play, man. Can he play? I think that a lot of scouts kind of base their recruiting off of his sophomore and junior years, which he pretty much lit it up. I mean, he's got an amazing arm. But he doesn't throw with the best accuracy, and that's the thing. He's got a quick release. He's got good arm strength. But it seems like he plays with a little bit of happy feet in the pocket. I mean, he gets rid of the ball pretty quick. But the thing is, he plays with a lot of guys that are going on to play for big D1 programs. So, I mean, he benefits a lot from the guys around him. I don't know if his game is going to completely translate to the college ranks, but I think he's a good project. He's a good development project. He, Like I said, he's the number five quarterback in the nation. That's something to say. So we'll see if we have a shot at him. We are in the top four, so we'll have to see as, as recruiting goes on. So I have a thing for underdogs, and this is, that's exactly what Josh Talevsky is. He's an underdog out of Athens, Georgia. Not recruited highly at all. He's the number 82 quarterback in the nation. Not getting much respect there, but he is a pure pocket passer, and I love it. I mean, honestly, he can move a little bit. He's not slow, but he throws with great accuracy, great anticipation. I love it. When I saw him play in person, I was impressed, and he didn't play against the best competition, but that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to dominate the competition you play against, and that's what he does. He plays with great great awareness in the pocket i mean he gets rid of the ball when he needs to he doesn't have happy feet he gets rid of the ball on time and on target he throws his guys open he reminds me a lot of kirk cousins and kirk cousins isn't the most mobile mobile quarterback he hasn't exactly won at the nfl level but he's really really accurate with his throws he does a good job of anticipating his guys getting open and that's exactly what televsky does i mean he's a guy that has good size 6'3 he's got good weight on him 215 so i'm really excited for him and maybe he'll come you guys have all heard the saying it's who you know and you know we know this armstead family this is the last brother here jordan armstead he's a big receiver he's 6'5, 187 and he's gonna be a pretty big target if we get him to commit he's from san diego and you know he doesn't have the greatest speed but 6'5, you gotta use that size He's going to be quite the target on the outside. 
and I'm excited because we haven't had a receiver that's been this size before and he can catch I mean he's got great pretty good route running he's got good spectacular catch he's got decent release that can definitely improve but he's got good jumping good strength I mean he's just a good athlete for his size and I think he can go up and get it take another look at this catch I mean just going up over the defender the defender had no chance on that one and that's exactly what we want to see out of him if he does commit to SJSU this would be a really good signing so just doing my due diligence in the state of New Jersey during a recruiting trip, I was going out to check out one of these outside linebackers, David Davis. He's a really good athlete, 6'5", 226. But I noticed the team that he was playing had an amazing receiver. Let's check out Champagne Green. So I already talked about Jax King and looking at the rest of our recruiting board. He is a top of our board, but we're in fourth place and behind by 800 points. I'm not sure if we got a real shot at him. We'll see after this week, um, but it does look like he is leaning towards Army and he will be a great addition either way to any team he goes to. Tyree Jordan, I actually have as our second rated recruit because we need tight end. And, you know, he doesn't have the greatest of uh, attributes here, catching the ball, route running. It's not very good. But I really like his potential as a blocker, and he has great strength, 87. I think we can use that on the offensive line, especially at tight end. That would be a huge weapon, and I'm pretty excited. I mean, if you look at us right now, we're ahead by 1,400, and I think we're in the driver's seat. Jordan Armstead, you look at him, we're ahead by 1,200 points. And look who we're ahead of, Alabama. We're stealing recruits away from Alabama. You just look at his ratings here. He's got 76 catching, 75 route running, 83 spec tack. So I really like that. If we redshirt him, he's going to be ready to go in his redshirt freshman year. And he's going to be a pretty big weapon on the outside. A guy that I didn't show any highlights for, but a guy that I'm really excited about is Spencer Davis. I mean, he reminds me of Julian Edelman. And I hate to put that stereotype on him, but look at him. I mean, he's got 84 speed, which is decent, but 82 route running. I mean, he's going to get open, 73 catching. He's got to work on that, but he's got some pretty good elusiveness at 74. I'm really excited for this guy. We're in first place with him, and I think that we can steal him away from Notre Dame. Look at these big schools. I mean, Notre Dame, Michigan, Alabama, we can steal him away. Josh Talevsky, the quarterback that I was talking about, the pocket passer. We're ahead by over 1,000. And if you look at his ratings, he's got 82 throw power, 82 accuracy. He's going to be a good addition to the squad if he does commit. It looks like we're in the driver's seat for him. Champagne Green. So Champagne Green is going to be the fastest commit, probably fastest offensive commit, I'd say, that we'd probably get on our school at our school that since we've had this dynasty 92 speed 91 acceleration he's got 80 elusiveness too he's definitely going to be a good returner and you know he can work on his catching a little bit 66 catching 72 route running but i think after a year of redshirting he'll be ready to play we'll have to see with him but we are in first place we are only ahead by 300 so hopefully we can get him 
Igor Vishikov, and this is a guy that I really, really want. He's got good potential. I don't say that he, I wouldn't say that he's great, but he, he's got good strength right now, 80 strength. He's definitely got to develop a little bit, and he possibly could have some early playing time. We'll have to see. A guy that I really want as well, Armando Kowalski, and this guy is a pretty good guard here. He's got 83 impact block, and that would definitely help in the running game. We are in second place behind Wyoming. He's 74% locked, and a lot of times when that happens, they end up committing when they're that far ahead, but we'll have to see. Another offensive liner, Xander Okafor. He's 72 overall, but the thing is we're behind 900 points. And this is kind of the theme we're seeing here as we're down by either 900, 800, 1,000, or we're right in first place. It doesn't seem like we have like a really close race at all with any of these recruits. He's a decent offensive lineman. He's definitely going to be a guy that we'd probably redshirt 85 strength. So I like that you know, potential of recruiting two offensive linemen right there. So Cameron Merriman, the number one strong safety. We're behind 450 to Colorado, but I don't want to lose another recruit to Colorado. They stole away a couple of our recruits in the last couple of years. So getting to him would be pretty big. He's a good tackler. Like I said, he can possibly uh, move to linebacker. Mason Chubb out of Austin, Texas, one of Bradley Chubb's brothers, and if you look at him, he's a number 28 defensive end. We do need defensive linemen, and he's just a decent all-around guy. I don't know what his niche is going to be. He's kind of carving that out, but he's got good size, 6'6", 296, and we're in first place for him, so that's a good sign. Thomas Rodriguez, you know, he's kind of a bust, 64 overall, and when we recruited him, look, he went down 9 overall, 85 throw power, only 64 throw accuracy. I actually thought he was a little bit faster too, but he ends up only being 72 speed. But I don't care. I, I still want to recruit him. And I think that maybe, you know, with a red shirt season and a couple of years sitting behind the starter, maybe he'll have a uh, shot to play. Unfortunately, we did have a couple of locked out recruits and a couple of recruits that just weren't interested from the beginning. And one of those is Jamal Curtin. And this is actually because Sean Curtin's little brother, if you followed my Marquette series, this is Jamal Curtin, actually not my Marquette series, my Coastal Carolina. He was our quarterback there, and he's the number seven outside linebacker in the nation. And you look at him here, he's got decent tackling. Look at that hit power at 90, and it looks like he's probably headed to Miami. We did need a, need a kicker because, you know, Papa Z is a senior this year, so we're definitely going to need a kicker. And Dylan Johnson out of Fremont, Ohio, the number 10 kicker in the nation, we are in second place for him behind Kent State, behind 410 points, so we still got a shot with him. But Fox Trent Jr., quarterback, we definitely wanted to get this guy, and he's got 86 speed, 89 acceleration. But look at his throw power, 86, which is pretty good, and 69 throw accuracy, which is pretty below average. But look at Kentucky. I mean, they're going for this guy, and we're behind 2,000. I'm not sure we're going to keep him on the board and keep those points assigned to him but we tried to recruit him. A couple of guys rounding out the end of our board here. Tom Long is a tight end, and you see he's just pretty decent. I mean, he's not great at anything, but we do need some tight ends on the board. But we're behind 1,500, so I'm not sure if we'll keep him. So we're definitely going to be adding some tight ends, I'm pretty sure, to the board. Jarrett Kennedy is a tackle that's interested. We only got 100 points on him, but he is a good run blocker, so we might even convert him two guard he's got good acceleration so those look like guard type of ratings to me and look he's the number five tackle in the nation so we'd be getting pretty good money out of him he's a four-star recruit 6'5 298 another tackle Matt White we're behind 400 points with him he's more of a tackle he's got 80 bl pass blocking but he's got a high acceleration so he can get after it too but I like that pass blocking potential and maybe we'll see so the last three guys on the board are just late ads here Matt Kennedy Number 60 defensive end, he's not really great at anything except power moves. I mean, look at that. The power moves and block shit. He might be a pretty good defensive tackle, I'd say. But you know what? Why is he rated so low? He's at 63 overall. This doesn't look like a 63 overall guy. Maybe there's something that we're missing here that we can't see. Maybe his awareness is low. Maybe his play recognition is low. I don't know. Can we see play recognition on this guy? Let's check. Okay, we can. 72 play recognition. So I'm not sure why he's so low right now. Maybe it's his strength. His strength is at 67.
Maybe that's what's bringing him down. Marcus Russell, a guy that we haven't even scouted really, but I like him just looking at his ratings here. He's the number 43 outside linebacker. From Florida, we do kind of want to get some Florida recruits because usually though the Florida recruits are athletic. He starts at 67 overall. We don't know what he's going to end up. And then John Douglas, a tight end that we just added to the board. We're in second place for him. I don't really know what his ratings are going to be. He's kind of lower. He's, we get a big bonus, so I don't really need to put any points on him just yet because, you know, we have a big 240-point uh, bonus here with the uh, bonus factors here. So this is what our recruiting board is going to look like. Like I said, I created 20 prospects. A few of them actually locked us out. So not everybody made it. And uh, I didn't want to waste my time really going over those guys because, you know, they're not on our board and we can't really recruit them. So that's going to do it for this episode. Let me know what you guys think. I want to take a look at, you know, the rest of the top prospects just to see where they're thinking about going. Georgia looks like the number one prospect is going to Georgia. Number two prospect, it might be headed to Georgia. Number three guy has Georgia second. I mean, look at Georgia. Number four might be going to Georgia. I mean, all these guys. Look at Georgia's in the top five there. I mean, they might have a big season. As remember, they pretty much choked away the national championship last year. There's another Georgia recruit. Looks like he's even close to even committing here. FAU still in the running, but, you know, a lot of these guys, like I said, they were interested after the second season when we were in the Fiesta Bowl. But last year, we didn't get that national attention that we hoped for and it looks like these guys aren't really interested so let, like i said let me know what you guys think of the recruiting board this season i'm definitely going to be adding some more guys and i'll highlight them as season four goes on but hit subscribe hit that like button next week we are going up against stanford and this is a rivalry game so stanford is the number 13 team in the nation so we play back-to-back -back number 13 teams in the nation and you see they put up 45 points a game in the first two weeks as they are just on fire let's just look to see who they played so they played rice in arizona so they put up 42 and 48 points respectively and they beat arizona who was actually one of the top teams in the nation last year until you know they saw some injuries happen and they kind of didn't recover so this is going to be a tough game it's a rivalry game like i said we played them in the first two seasons we didn't play them last year because they were in our conference and they just weren't scheduled. So this is going to be interesting. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.